Hello everyone, I'm Bra Mithra. It's that time, back again, Dark Herald time. This time we have the Griffin, an expansion we know very little about. So this is actually really amazing that we get to get a Dark Herald. I kind of thought maybe it might be skipped in favor of Mountain Man, but no, here it is, Griffin. This is a very exciting one. Let's open it up right here. So here we have uh, the Griffin expansion. This is uh, right here, Griffin. Dark Herald, sorry, I had to scroll up a little bit. <laughs> so, Gambush Chest Expansion, this is, again, uh, this is just the interlude or the prelude or the, you know, the forward by Poots before we get into the Herald. However, this one, normally I just go over this really quick. However, this one's absolutely amazing. So, we are down to organizing files, coordinating with the printer, finishing the interior game tray, She's working with game trays and final copy editing. He's declared we're at ninety nine percent now, so it should be really close. I'm thinking Black Friday, we'll get the announcement finally that it's off to the printer. I have reached the point of full satisfaction, and I cannot even imagine any more tweaks, secret play tests, or subtle gear adjustments. Thus far, I have received digital proofs for the encounter board and final token sheet okay pencils are down okay and then we get this amazing artwork here uh, I mean not artwork this is from someone posted this somewhere I don't know exactly who it is I would love to credit the person who did this I saw it in the lanterns rain discord painting contest I just don't know who it is I've been asking around this is absolutely amazing uh, when I saw this during the discord judging and everything I laughed so much. This is absolutely amazing. For This is also to appear in the actual, like, Dark Herald update is amazing, too. Because, look, Poots gets a lot of crap, and for him to include this is awesome, right? Because this is, this is a joke on his part, this mini, right? So, for him to include it is amazing. This just shows, like, the type of... Humor that can be gotten when you are, you know, you, just just because you're doing something, or just because you're you're highlighting something that is an overall negative, right? Like th that's what this was. This was meant to be. Oh, look, it's funny because he said pencil down and never pencils are never going to be down. But it, it it's still joke, right? You can enjoy the humor. You can find humor in those kind of like things, and sometimes that's what happens. Right? And the fact that he finds humor in it, too, is just absolutely amazing. So I commend him for putting this in the update. Uh, it's great of him. It's, it's, it's awesome. So I, I like the fact he included this. I find this to be absolutely amazing. Like I said, I laughed so much when I saw this on the, the judging. So here we go. Dark Herald 9. This is with uh, Griffin. It has been several months since we started climbing the inverted mountain together. And the path to the mountain's plateau summit is finally within sight. We have braved the dangers of the cesspool, scavenged from the mountain's hidden alcoves, and established contact with the white speaker cult. This is interesting that that would be said there, right? Established contact with the white speaker cult. I wonder what that means. Because I was always wondering what would, what what would you do, right? If if you're really gonna have the nemesis be or have red witches be a nemesis throughout a campaign, it means you're gonna encounter them multiple times. So they're probably maybe gonna be like Lion Knight, or in some fashion, for them to come back and forth and stuff to fight you three or four times, maybe they'd be willing to talk to the survivors. So it's very interesting that this would be included. So maybe we might get some White Speaker Cult stuff with Red Witch's expansion. Maybe they're in the Inverted Mountain, right? Maybe there's some part there. Maybe that's why... Well, Pariah goes up there to escape, so it wouldn't really make any sense for them, the cult to be there. But it doesn't say establish contact with Red Witches. It says the White Speaker Cult in a hole there. But here on the Savage Pats at the Mountain's Heights, we will be encountering an existence hitherto unseen in our climb. An apex predator. So that's the griffin here. Um, this is Griffin Expansion. This was re-sculpted. This looks like the new one. It got, it got a little bit more weight. <laughs> I think there's, here's a little graphic here where it shows it changing. It got a little more... He was really lean. Now he got a little bit 
bigger. Looks like the tail was brought down a little bit and the wings were fleshed out more. Uh, interesting. The Griffin Sculpt is still kind of questionable. I'm not super in on the Griffin Sculpt. It's cool, but whatever. It is what it is. Here's where we get to some juicy bits here. The Griffin is a node 4 quarry. Now, if the king holds true to what will be the example moving forward, the node 4s are always going to be added after Lantern Year 20. So likely after... Not necessarily after the core, but in the gambler's chest, it doesn't look like you could push back gambler. Because in People of the Lantern, Watcher is on Lantern Year 25, but you can move him up. Maybe you could push back Gambler, but he's on the timeline at Lantern Year 20. So you probably kill him and fight him in Lantern Year 20, and then, you know, King comes along and all that stuff. So Node 4 is probably always going to be a Lantern Year 21 kind of addition. So what this means is, if there is a core even in Iron Mountain, I don't know if there is going to be a core. It might just be the Mountain Man might be the finale. But either way, this is a node 4 now confirmed, which I think it always was meant to be one, but this, you know, this solidifies it, so that's great. The Griffin is a node 4 quarry with a vicious temperament found at the highest altitudes of the inverted mountain. It is also one of our most versatile play experiences to date and can be used as a standalone expansion, integrated into the inverted mountain campaign, or used as the basis for its own 25-year campaign. So this is all great stuff. Uh, I mean... Sure, I don't know about all this, because Dragon King can do all this too, so can Sunstalker, right? They can be used as their standalone expansion. They could be integrated, or well, they are part of the um, Sun, so they have their own basis for their own 25-year campaign. They are both Sun and Stars. And be integrated into the Inverted Mountain campaign. It sounds like, to me, that means Inverted Mountain campaign is like its own closed thing, right? If you're part of Inverted Mountain, that's a selling point. Not like not like uh, people of the Lantern, where like I just said with with Sunstalker and Dragon King, them being in being able to integrate means it's a standalone expansion. That's what standalone means. So it says here it's one of our most versatile play experiences to date. Can be used as a standalone expansion. So that means people of the Lantern, people of the Dreamkeeper, stuff like that, integrated in the Inverted Mountain. To me, that says no nodes in the Inverted Mountain. Otherwise, it would just be a standalone expansion, and. A, or it's just stand, it's just a node thing, and then it's also a 25-year campaign. So it seems like Inverted Mountain, you might not be able to just throw in other stuff. Maybe it's like its own closed thing, which would be neat. That'd be really awesome. I'm hoping that's what it is. Uh, where are they? They are sullen beasts that make their home in gargantuan nests affixed to the side of the mountain. These nests are formed from... A combination of its black resin spit, the carcasses of its meals, and enthralled prey. So that means there's living stuff living installed inside the nest too. Because if it's installed uh, enthralled prey, it hasn't been killed yet. <laughs> uh, there we go. There's you know artwork. Though we have described the griffin as an individual creature so far, it may be more accurate to treat the monster as multiple organisms. Griffins are monozygotic twins that suffer from parasitic twinning in the womb. The stronger autocyte dominates the development process and forms the body of the beast, while the omphalocyte, I think that's how you say that, uh, remains attached to its sibling and it, or wait, yes, remains attached to its sibling and its prehensile tail. The resentment that these conjoined twins harbor for each other is the core of the monster's emotional instability, leading to both its legendary temper and boundless agita. Okay, I think that's how you say that. As a result, the griffin is trapped in a constant cycle of self-destructive stress responses. That's a lot of stuff there. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this. This is conjoined here. You can see here the card itself has kind of like a weird thing here, right? See this this extra like break here? It's got artwork, but this is not a normal break. This looks like a place to slot a card here. And you'll see that in, in the next card. And then it has a break here at the top, which is interesting, right? Why would you have a break here right at the start? When this is drawn normally, the break here right at the start is kind of interesting. So, move and attack target, suffer dismembered arm, severe injury, and gain minus one. Move token, all nice. So here we go. Ruinous Rampage. The monster's twin mouths howl in guttural rage. Place the rest of the AI deck 
into the discard. So that means at the moment, right now, when you do this, when you draw this, all the cards from the AI deck will be in the discard pile. Right? Place the rest of the AI deck into the discard pile. Right? Then attach every conjoined card to the discard... Every dis every conjoined card in the discard to this card. So, that's where you'd slot this, right? This would slide under this card, and then the break would be here. So, this is neat. This is kind of like Lion God's Relentless here, this conjoined here, uh, where, but it's it's more it's just a better. It's much more much more like it's a, it's just a better system. I like this way better than Relentless. Relentless, you keep drawing cards, but. Uh, with this, you slide them under, and you'll make one big monstrous card. Now, the downside of this is it's kind of like Sunstalker. It could kill itself, depending on how many of these conjoined cards you get. So what I mean by that was, say you had the remainder of the discard pile. Say you had two cards in the discard pile, both of which were conjoined. They're already in the discard pile. You draw Ruinous Rampage. Ruinous Rampage goes into play. Then you take the disc, the rest of the AI deck, so there was another, card in, another two cards in the AI deck, both of which are conjoined. You then, you know, turn it upside down because you put it into the discard pile. Put all four cards onto this one thing. And then right here at this break, you could just attack the griffin and you'd kill it because there's no cards in the discard pile. So it's kind of like a glass cannon kind of like thing with a, just a series of breaks. Uh, however, if you don't kill it, then you have to deal with this super long card with just a series of breaks. Uh, it could get really wonky too, depending on how they go in play. I'm assuming they must go into play... Like, attach every conjoined card in the discard to this card. See, there's no, like, initiative here. There's no, like, anything here. So it must, they must just get added. It must, it must not be up to the monster controller. Maybe it is up to the monster controller how you add this, but I would assume it adds them in order. It should probably say add them in order to the bottom of the... Like, then attach every conjoined card in the discard pile in order to this card. So you start with the top one, it goes next, then the next then next. So you don't just look at them all, fish them all out, and then just, you know, you could just set it up to whatever you want. You could set it up to something where, well, every, all these so far that we've seen all have move and attack. But you could, like, set it up in some way where once you've just dashed once, then it just kind of doesn't do anything. Or maybe it bashes, or you can get it all to target one person. So uh, hopefully it, it, they all go in in order. That'd be nice. So... Uh, when confronted by external threats like hunters, the monster switches rapid, rapidly between violently lashing out and anxiously repairing the damage inflicted to its nest by its own rampages. So I guess you always hunt it in its nest, I guess. To assist with the latter aspect of this behavior, the griffin condenses the stress circulating in its body, or circulating its body into a powerful neurotoxin musk that it emits through its mouths and wing pits which are more mouths <laughs> prolonged exposure to this scent inflicts its victims with the same anxiety that inflicts the monster causing a relentless urge that can only be placated by adding to the griffin's living nest a survivor may narrowly avoid falling through a crevasse torn into the monster's nest only to find themselves happily sealing the rift using their own body as binder. Uh, that's a lot of words, but here you go. Here in Living Mortar, you can see, I don't know why this person's so smiley and happy, but whatever. Uh, you cannot spend movement or suffer knockback as long as you have this card. The start of your act, gain minus one movement token. Then, if you have more minus one movement tokens than movement, you fuse with the nest forever, dead. <laughs> An adjacent survivor may spend an action and roll 1d10. If their result is higher than your number of minus one movement tokens, archive this card. Okay. Here we go. Survivors that manage to slay the griffin might find themselves disappointed by the tough and tasteless flavor of the monster's cortisol-laden flesh. But we'll be happy to hear that there are plenty of other uses for the monster's materials. So, Kingdom Death, basically the game. Here we go. Uh, here we have the recurve bow, or recursive bow, scourge, recurve. So this is a lot going on here. So it's sharp, it's range six. When you activate this, the weapon to the right of this gains plus one luck and savage the next time it is activated this round, right? So 
here's the thing with this. This bow here is really good, and when you put something on over here to the right of it, it will gain plus one luck and savage, right? That's great if you were to pair it with this right here. But the other thing about this, it says the next time it is activated this round, meaning that you're probably going to want to surge to do it, or, however, this bow is not cumbersome, and it's sharp. So this bow is just good by itself. A non-cumbersome, sharp bow, that's amazing. Hits on an A+, kind of sucks, but whatever. <laughs> so here's the Scourge Claw. We have, where is it? Weapon, melee, guitar, metal, resin, whatever. Paired and deadly. So this does the same exact thing. When you activate this... The weapon to the left of this gains plus 5 strength and surpass 5 the next time it is activated this round. Limit once per round. Again, so you want to put this to the left of something. These two bows are, I mean, these two things are clearly used together, the claw and the bow, right? That's what you're probably going to want to do. That's why they were showed off together. But uh, at the same time, this claw here is paired. I don't know why you would ever want to pair this and then you, because you, it's just weird. You would never want to really pair this. If you did pair that, not not because of the speed argument, right? There's always the speed argument for pairing. I'm just talking about, like, even pairing this, paired weapons, like, the copy of a paired weapon loses the fact, it would lose deadly, it would lose its paired, it would lose all of its benefits. Sure, you could buff it, I guess. I don't know. That, that's I'm kind of iffy if you could even buff the the like proxy blank card but if you were to buff it it's no longer deadly so why wouldn't you just want to buff a better weapon so i don't know why you would ever pair this right uh it just seems odd i don't know why you'd ever want to pair this i guess guitars are just always paired by default but it seems weird that this would be paired so uh weaponry made from the griffin's resources channel the monster's multi-headed aggression powering up other weapons when used okay so that's we saw that here we have the artwork for all this stuff doesn't look like this but maybe it kind of does i don't know they don't kind of they don't really look like that now this is like old i think we saw this before the these artwork but um helmets look neat so here's the helmets kind of weird because like I don't know, are you harvesting its babies? Because the head of the griffin is way bigger than this. Like, way bigger than this. So I don't know what skull this is. Way bigger. Let's go back up to the griffin itself. Look at this. Look at the griffin skull. Look how big it is, right? Look at this compared to the survivors. Even here, it's eating a survivor, right? Its skull is bigger than its entire body. So this weird... I don't know. It's kind of weird. <laughs> But whatever, I guess just because it looks cool, I guess. Uh, I guess they're carving out the heads. Who knows? But there's the bow. Really cool. Let's see. Now, the other thing is you can't do this with the right because it says the weapon. Yeah, the weapon to the right of this gains plus one luck and savage. So you can't do this with the arrow. Arrows aren't weapons. So, uh, let's see. Next. So, yeah, we just have all these. Whatever. Beep, beep, beep. Bird. Oh, there's the one armor. So, um... Again, she's pairing them. I don't know why you ever want to pair that. You would need a third weapon to really utilize it or just not pair them because you don't want to lose the deadly and stuff. This is such a cool spear thing. I love this hair. Very cool hair here for the uh, survivor. So, Harlequin Mantle. Armor, set, feather, metal, resin, flammable. When you would suffer knockback, gain the airborne survivor status instead. This is just absolutely amazing. That's why Iron Mountain's probably going to be super cool. Now, if you notice right here, this has the little armor underneath this. Uh, this is something that's been new with beta cards. Uh, this is not something we've seen on any other card. Even if you go back to, like, uh, the Black Knight, the last time we saw armor, they had it over here. So, these must have been made recently with the addition of beta i hope we're not just going to get like random random things like oh well this expansion just has these here when normally everything else has them here maybe one time it will be down here i saw in the news shop there's like pattern emblems up here for pattern gear now that was never on a thing before it's all kind of weird just weird un like not correct things so hopefully that fixes lightweight and springy the monster's resin spit can be incorporated into its armor in order to allow its wearer to redirect the force of incoming attacks into an upward thrust. Once airborne, the wearer can reposition themselves using their gliding mantle before attacking from above with momentum or with momentous force. So, 
Uh, here we have uh, Lucy and Urza, the starting survivors, right? These are the starting survivors that we know and love. Here they are. Here they are. There's Lucy. How about that? People of the Nest are a group of survivors that have lived under the domain of an elder griffin for many generations. Constant exposure to the monster's musk has permanently altered their physiology and expanded the elder or and expanding the elder's nest has become an entrenched aspect of the settlement's culture. From the nestborn pilgrimage that fledgling survivors undertake to the final ascent an elder makes in order to join the nest in death, every survivor must contribute. So this is the people of the nest, just a big long thing here. Now we have artwork here uh, that I'm going to skip past. So we have the two-faced secret fighting art. This is just really weird. I'll read it, but I don't even know. I I, I don't even know really. I would I need to see more about this because this is just weird. So divide your gear grid into left and right according to the diagram above. Gear placed on the right must have rules that use activation and cannot be activated except by the effects of this secret fighting art. Uh, so gear placed in the right must have rules that use activation. Does that mean a weapon? Because technically weapons use activations, or does it mean an extra activation like Rawhide Headband has an actual activation thing? So at the start of your act, randomly select a gear space on the right and gain an additional activation that can only be used to activate gear in that space. So I guess not weapons? I think this means not weapons. But you you do use the activation to activate a weapon. So I'm assuming this means not weapons. So this is just a free way of using cat eye circle or something because then you get to activate it for free. Or you get a free surge. I don't know exactly how this works. It seems odd. I think this means headband and cat eye circle. Anyway, should be more clear. Should say like non weapon or something. Uh, so that's this. The neat thing about this, this is probably something you gain from People of the Nest, meaning that People of the Nest will have its own intimacy table and all that stuff. This is from, you know, the, having the musk that's always around the settlement and stuff. This alters their physiology, so you get conjoined twins. Really cool. I love the fact that People of the uh, Nest will have their own intimacy table. Thus concludes our heralding once again. It has been many lantern years since we've begun our journey up the Inverted Mountain. As of today, we have braved everything the mountain has to offer. Well, almost everything the summit awakes. So I think that means Mountain Man will be the finale, or <laughs> there could be, a, it could be the core that takes place after year 25, because this makes it sound like you'll be hunting griffins before you even get to the Mountain Man. So either way, this was a great update, Really great update. Like, this is one of the best updates. One, because it sounds like Gambrush is really going to be wrapping up finally for once. Uh, it was just great to see Poots have, like, be part of the thing, including that picture that's so hilarious. And then this was just a really good one because we didn't know anything about this monster. So I've been really wanting to know about this monster. Um... And this is great. Everything about it is really great. There's nothing really to say about it. This is everything that you could have ever wanted from any update. So this is might be one of the best Heralds yet. Um, great. I love this Herald. So, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time in the next Dark Herald.